Roman Scandal, Episode 19, Marcus Aurelius and Commodus. Marcus Aurelius was a student of Stoic philosophy. His reign was nothing like his predecessors in bloodletting, at least in Rome. He even ordered gladiators to fight with blunted weapons to lessen the probability of fatal combat. He would not look at lions trained to eat humans, but he had nothing against hunting, so in the matter of wild animal spectacles, he presented 100 lions in one performance, all slain with arrows. Like other emperors, he prohibited men and women from bathing together in public. But these repeated imperial edicts make one question whether the practice was so common in Rome that it could not be suppressed, like cousin marriage and eunuchs. Marcus was absent from Rome for eight years fighting barbarians and died in 180 at age 59 and reigned 11 years. He was greatly disappointed in his heir Commodus, and this tragedy will form the next section. As Dio commented, Our history now descends from a kingdom of gold to one of iron and rust. Commodus was only 19 years old when Marcus died. His cowardice made him a toady of sycophants who introduced him to licentiousness and bloodlust. The paranoid emperor exiled his own sister Lucilla for treason and his wife Crispina for adultery, later put to death at Capri. In 185, Sextus Perennis, the Praetorian leader, was denounced by the freedman Marcus Cleander of the imperial court. He was then beheaded along with his wife and children. There were many more and the complete catalog of death is now lost. As Dio reported, I should render my narrative very tedious were I to give a detailed report of all the persons put to death by Commodus, of all those whom he made away with as the result of false accusations or unjustified suspicions, or because of their conspicuous wealth, distinguished family, unusual learning, or some other point of excellence. While Perennis was still alive, the mode of life was to let Commodus indulge in vice, while Perennis ran the empire for a private gain. Historia Augusta recounts, Under this agreement, then, Commodus lived in the palace amid banquets and baths, along with three hundred concubines, gathered together for their beauty and chosen for both matrons and harlots, and, with minions, also three hundred in number, whom he had collected by force and by purchase indiscriminately from the common people and the nobility on the basis of bodily beauty, his concubines were debauched before his own eyes, and he was not free from the disgrace of intimacy with young men, defiling every part of his body in dealings with persons of either sex. Commodus behaved with a lack of restraint unusual even for an emperor. In his worship of Isis, he carried an idol of Anubis and hit worshippers in the head with the face of the statue. He caused humans to be sacrificed in the cult rituals of Mithras, not satisfied with incantations which merely suggested it. He ordered the votaries of Bellona to cut off one of their arms. He maimed people and then mocked them. He kept a man with a giant penis whom he called Donkey. He ordered the Praetorian prefect Julianus to dance nude for his concubines. He would bathe up to eight times a day. He drank in public and wore women's clothes to the theater. But it was his pretending to be a gladiator that really scandalized the patricians. Commodus enjoyed blood spectacles and took an active part in killing defenseless animals. The poor beasts were speared well in advance of the emperor descending to the floor of the circus or Colosseum to finish the killing with the sword. Commodus thereby killed five hippos, two elephants, a hyena, and some rhinoceri. In one Colosseum appearance, Commodus shot a hundred bears to death with bow and arrows from his perch above the ring. In a two-week spectacle, he descended into the ring and killed tame animals he could approach without fear, and others led to him or brought out in nets. He then slew a tiger, a hippo, and an elephant. With two bodyguards, he appeared in the equipment of a secutor, armed with a wooden sword. His opponent had a cane. In this tame pantomime, the emperor emerged victorious and kissed his antagonist. Then, from his accustomed perch in the Colosseum, he viewed the real gladiators who fought to the death. If there was a delay in killing, he had the combatants tied together until they were slain. 
He once beheaded an ostrich and displayed the head to the section where senators were attending, making menacing gestures and facial expressions. It was not only wild animals, because he often slew in public large numbers of men. One recorded example was that of a large group of amputees gathered from throughout Rome, made to wear serpent costumes on their stumps and clubbed to death by Commodus playing Hercules. After the Perennis era, the chief henchman was Cleander, a former slave who auctioned off senatorial rank, military command, governorships, and anything else he could think of. Papirius Dionysius, the grain commissioner, sought the destruction of Cleander during a famine and withheld food from Rome, blaming it on Cleander, inciting a great mob to find Commodus in his Quintilian suburb, demanding the death of Cleander. The emperor relented and ordered him slain along with his two sons, and Cleander's head was paraded back to Rome on a stick. Their corpses were subjected to every indignity, dragged through the streets, and finally cast into a sewer. Dionysius didn't enjoy his little triumph, because he was executed shortly after. Cleander had had sex with the imperial concubines, and had children by them. But, together with their mothers, they were all put to death after his downfall. Commodus changed the name of Rome to Commodiana, the universal colony of the earth. He caused the months of the year to be named after his official titles, such as Amazonius and Exuperatorius. Amazonius and Exuperatorius he applied to himself constantly to indicate that in every respect he surpassed absolutely all of mankind. His typical salutation to the Senate was, The Emperor Caesar Lucius Aelius Aurelius Commodus Augustus Pius Felix Sarmaticus Germanicus Maximus Britannicus Pacifier of the whole earth, Invincible, the Roman Hercules, Pontifex Maximus, Holder of the Tribunician Authority for the eighteenth time, Imperator for the eighth time, Consul for the seventh time, Father of his country, to consuls, praetors, tribunes, and the fortunate Commodian Senate, greetings. Many statues were erected representing him in the costume of Hercules, and one in gold was said to weigh a thousand pounds. The Senate voted that his reign should be named the Golden Age, and Commodus received the title of God. What seemed to excite the most revulsion about Commodus was his play acting at gladiatorial combat termed by the historian Herodian as degrading and disgusting. The end of Commodus came in late 192 from a plot involving Aemilius Latus, the Praetorian prefect, a mistress, and a naked boy. One version of the story says Marcia, the emperor's mistress, discovered a death list on a wax tablet purloined by a mischievous imp of a boy named Philo Commodus, one of the naked boys kept by the rich people, adorned with nothing but gold and costly gems. Roman voluptuaries took delight in these poor creatures, and Commodus was very fond of his, and had often slept with him. Marcia alerted the others, and they tried poisoning Commodus. And when this failed, they hired a wrestling instructor named Narcissus to drown him as he was bathing. Commodus was 31 years old and reigned 12 years and 9 months. The Senate issued a Damnatio Memoriae. Let the memory of the murderer and the gladiator be utterly wiped away. Let the statues of the murderer and the gladiator be overthrown. Let the memory of the foul gladiator be utterly wiped away.